Hey, this is Presh Tullwalker. Lotteries like the Mega Millions and Powerball can sometimes have jackpots that exceed $1 billion. The odds of winning each lottery are about 1 in 300 million, and each ticket costs $2. Theoretically, you could buy all combinations of tickets for 600 million, leaving you with a guaranteed winnings of $400 million. So this raises a question. Can you just buy all the tickets and guarantee yourself a huge payout? Alas, reality gets in the way of this dream. One issue is the lump sum payment. Another issue is that of shared winnings. And then a third issue is the practical issue of getting that many tickets. Finally, in this video, I'll verify all the odds I've presented. So let's get started with the lump sum payment. The jackpot of $1 billion is paid out in 30 equal yearly payments. If you want all the money up front, it goes down to about 50 to 60%. So let's just say optimistically, it's $600 million. Now, if you have $600 million in winnings, that exactly offsets all the combinations you would need to put out. Now, this is ignoring all the smaller prizes for matching some of the numbers. So it's not a complete analysis, but you can see right away, this strategy of buying all combinations isn't likely to net you a lot of money. But there's another issue with this, that of shared winnings. So you get $600 million in a lump sum payment if you buy all combinations. Let's say there are 120 million other tickets sold. So we can calculate the number of winners, the probability of that happening, and your share of the prize. So if there are zero other winners, we can calculate the probability is 67%, and your share will be 100% of the prize. But what if there's one other winner? The probability of this is 27%, and your share gets cut in half. You have to share this with the other winner, and you only get 50%. If there are two other winners, the probability of this happening is 5%, and your share is one third, 33.33%. Now, the probability of more than two winners in this case is about 1%, and your share will be even less. So, your expected share of the winnings is 82%, but in about 33% of the cases, you're going to be left splitting the prize with someone else. So you put up $600 million, but you're not getting $600 million back. That is a huge problem. Furthermore, as the jackpot size increases, the number of tickets sold also increases because of the frenzy. So more realistically, we might consider that 300 million tickets are sold. In that case, the number of winners being zero has a probability of 37%. That's the chance you won't share it with anyone else. The chance of one other winner is also 37%. The chance of two other winners is 18%. And the chance of more than two winners is 8%. So here, your expected share of the prize is just 63%. And in 63% of the cases, you're going to be sharing the jackpot. So you will definitely be out a lot of money. So let's just summarize this. We have a $1 billion jackpot which gets reduced to $600 million if you take a lump sum payment. Then it gets reduced further to a $378 million expected value of split winnings. However, that doesn't really capture the story because there's a high chance that you're gonna split the prize and a high chance you'll be out $300 million or more. So if you spend $600 million to buy all combinations, you're looking at a $222 million loss. So this is not a good strategy to pursue. Now let's just say you ignore all these odds and you still want to pursue this strategy. Well, you're still going to run into some practical issues. How are you going to buy 300 million tickets? In order to get the numbers you want, you need to hand mark them. So if you have 300 million tickets and you can mark them at one minute per ticket, assuming you work eight hours per day, this will be 625,000 days to mark all of these numbers. So you're not gonna be able to mark them in a reasonable amount of time between when the lottery is announced and when it is drawn. I'll now conclude the video by verifying the odds presented. 
In the Mega Millions lottery, the odds of winning are about 1 in 302 million. The lottery works where you pick 5 numbers from 1 to 70 without replacement and the order does not matter. You then pick one number from 1 to 25. So what are the total number of combinations where you could pick 5 numbers from 1 to 70? So we have 5 slots. The first slot can be 70 numbers, then 69, then 68, then 67, then 66. We multiply these together to get all permutations. But the order doesn't matter, so we need to divide it by the number of ways we can arrange 5 items. This will be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is equal to 120. The number of ways we can pick one number from 1 to 25 is 25. So we take the total number of permutations, divide it by 120, multiply it by 25, and we get about 302 million. Now, this is a correct calculation. In order to do a shortcut, we could just do 70 choose 5. This is 70 factorial divided by 65 factorial, 5 factorial, and this is going to be about 12 million. We multiply this by 25, and that gets us to about 302 million. The Powerball lottery works slightly differently. The odds are 1 in 292 million. So you pick five numbers from 1 to 69, the order doesn't matter, and then you need to pick one number from 1 to 26. So we have 69 choose 5, then we take 26 other numbers, we multiply these together, and we get 292 million. Now what about shared winnings? Let's say T is equal to 300 million other tickets sold. P is about 1 in 300 million, that's the probability of winning the lottery. So by the binomial theorem, we have P multiplied by winning plus 1 minus P multiplied by losing. We want this whole thing raised to the power of T, where T is equal to 300 million. You can calculate the probability of X by calculating the particular coefficient of P raised to the power of X multiplied by 1 minus P raised to the power of T minus X, and this is T choose X. But this is going to be very difficult to calculate because T is a very large number and P is a very small number. So what we're going to use is the Poisson approximation. It works extremely well in this type of case. So the probability of X is equal to E to the power of negative lambda multiplied by lambda to the power of X all over X factorial, and lambda is equal to T times P. So in this case, T times P is equal to one. So the probability that X is equal to zero just works out to be e to the power of negative lambda, and this is about 37%. The probability that x is equal to 1 is equal to e to the minus lambda, multiplied by lambda to the power of 1, divided by 1 factorial, and that's also about 37%. The probability that x is equal to 2 is e to the power of negative lambda, multiplied by lambda squared, divided by 2 factorial, and this works out to be about 18%. And that's where those odds come from. So unfortunately, there is a guaranteed way to win the lottery, but because of these practical issues, it's not a guaranteed way to win it profitably. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.